What's up guys, Big D Wiz here. Today we're gonna look at the Behringer iNuke NU 6000. 6000 watt class D amplifier from Behringer for pro audio use. Can just take you guys back a little bit to the NU 1000 we tested a while back, rated at 1000 watts. You can see we got 639 watts. So not really close to the ratings. Well that said, Let's check out the NU6000. This one's rated 3100 watts times two at four ohms and 1600 watts times two at eight ohms. And you can see Amazon prices it at 350 bucks, so that's a really good deal. Check out the video description for links to buy this if you're interested. The iNuk NU1000 weighs about six pounds, five ounces. And the NU6000 is about twice as heavy. It's about 11 pounds, 14 and a half ounces, or 5.4 kilograms. You can see from the front, both of the amplifiers look very similar. Obviously, they're 19 inch rack mount, so they're going to look the same, but the same thickness, height, and width. It's just the depth is different. You can see the depth here is about five inches deeper for the NU6000. It has two fans as opposed to one for the NU-1000. Has the same inputs and outputs, the combo TRS and XLRs. And here's the guts. You see the difference here, the one at the back, the one at the top, I should say, is the NU-1000. It has just a few caps, small transformer. And check out the NU-6000. It's got a much larger transformer, much larger capacitors here for filtering and for reserve and it has two fans to keep everything nice and cool so let's put this bad boy on the amp dyno and let's see how it does all right so the first round of tests we'll do will be eight ohms and the first test is a certified test which takes us up to one percent thd all tests are done at one kilohertz oh no not close to 1600 by two we not even get 1300 watts up to 1% THD, so maybe up to clipping we can get a little more. Let's try the test here. Again, one kilohertz test tone. It looks about identical, 1288, 1246, up to clipping for the Behringer iNuk NU6000. Well, last up, let's try the, the burst test, which is IHF202 compliant. It's a one kilohertz burst tone and nope, not even more power. Actually about the same, 1274, 1249. So we're not there, my friends. So based on the eight ohm performance, we don't expect 3100 times two at four ohms, but what do we get? Can we get 2000? Oh yeah, 2067 watts, but yes, smack the head. Why are we rated 3000 by two? Don't wanna hear this max rating crap that everybody says. Manufacturers need to tell us what the amplifiers are really putting out. That's what I'm doing. You can see uncertified about the same, 2,060 or so watts per channel. And then the dynamic burst, let's try that one, one kilohertz. Now we're getting up there, almost 2,500 watts times two. That's good power, but still not 3,000 by two like it's rated. Why don't we just rate the amps what they do? Come on manufacturers, it's not that difficult. Well, there you have the dyno test of the Behringer NU6000. I'm sure I'm gonna get a lot of responses saying, oh, it's great for the money, blah, blah, blah. Okay, well, maybe it is, but still, I don't like being misled and I'm being misled here. Everybody who reads the ratings is being misled. You're not getting a 6,000 watt amp, you're getting about a 4,000 watt amp, 5,000 watt max. Now I was trying to do a nice little science experiment for my daughter showing her how a speaker works. Unfortunately, the coil in this Orion subwoofer was frozen. So all we saw was the magic smoke come out. But the real interesting part here is her comment kind of fits in well to my feelings about any manufacturers that misrate amplifiers. Good gosh, that's 